For the past several weeks, I've had the great blessing of presiding at the Sacrament of Confirmation uh, for our religious education candidates, and it's been an enormous blessing for me personally. You know, the Minister of Confirmation is a bishop, but because of all the cancellations of confirmations, the Cardinal delegated the pastors to uh, confirm. So it's very unusual for a priest to bestow the Sacrament of Confirmation, and you know, Every confirmation I look at the faces of these young people and I know there's a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth about the future and then you look into their faces and you feel like, you know, these kids are going to make a tremendous difference in this world. We don't have anything to worry about. Uh, they have so much to offer. I had the great opportunity of interviewing most of them before uh, they were supposed to have been confirmed in March and just listening to them and the questions they have and the convictions they hold was very, very affirming. And I can't help but think as I have approaching the, my 10th confirmation uh, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, these gifts that are being bestowed on these young people of fortitude and knowledge and counsel and understanding and fear of the Lord, these gifts that will fortify them as they move into high school will be a great resource uh, for them. We hear in the opening words of this extraordinary first reading this morning, you know, uh, this reflection of love by St. Paul, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. You know, we're now past the sixth month of this COVID uh, pandemic, and we desperately need the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit. This pandemic has taken its toll. And I don't think anybody could say, oh, it hasn't affected me at all. Um, most of us have had our own intense struggles with this long period. Like most, I would have thought uh, by Easter we would be up and running. And now it's September the 16th, and we are very far from being up and, and running. Uh, you know, mental health experts have discovered, you know, just people, a growing irritability uh, as people get utterly frustrated with some of the restrictions, um, meltdowns, um, lashing out, uh, tremendous uh, judgments of others about their inadequacies or their um, problems, a it's all your fault, it's not my fault kind of attitude that creeps in with all the stress surrounding the world that we need to live in. And we've seen growing numbers of people struggling with depression, anxiety, substance abuse, domestic abuse, uh, social anxiety with young people. And so we hear this extraordinary ode to love from St. Paul this morning that is so comforting to us. I wish I could email this passage to everybody in the world because it's very comforting, consoling, and soothing. You know, this is the most popular reading that couples choose for weddings because of its meditation on love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It's not inflated. It's not rude. It's not quick-tempered. It does not seek its own interests. It doesn't brood. We all... Uh, could find great inspiration, couldn't we, if we embraced some of these insights into the power that love can have. The readings are pleading for us maybe to do a temperature check on my own life. Where am I directing my hostility? Who have I been rude to? What is the source of my brooding? Are there people that I, in all honesty, have been terribly unreasonable to or have contributed to gossip about them? How does this great gift of love wash over us? As St. Paul says, love never fails. Love never fails. And so as we gather on this beautiful morning in the midst of everything, we're invited to embrace this precious gift of love to be honest with ourselves, to be accountable. Maybe there's somebody I have 
to make an overture of forgiveness for the manner in which I've treated them. Maybe I have to hold in prayer someone who I find very difficult to be around. Maybe I have to stop judging and witness more to the powerful possibilities that God's love can have in my life, in all of our lives. Love never fails.